Hi, my name is Paul Brochison, and in this video, we're going to be looking at SOP verbs. SOP verbs are a very important concept, uh, which we will be using inside my upcoming course, Python States for Houdini TDs, to generate guide geometry. So in some type of states, like for example, nodeless states or other types of states, we will want to be able to construct geometry without having a node network. So in this video, uh, which is a extract from the course itself, we're going to be learning how to do exactly that. So in this video, I want to briefly touch on uh, SOP verbs and uh, just show a couple of examples. So SOP verbs are essentially um, virtual uh, versions of nodes that, that describe operations you can apply onto geometry. So, you know, in your network editor, you can sort of think of these nodes as uh, visual representations of what SOP verbs are, right? They internally describe an operation of what is going to happen. And to do that, it has these parameters that it uses to uh, configure how to do the operation. So if we have this box node here, and we, for example, um, drop down a poly extrude, we are now essentially applying the poly extrude SOP verb onto the incoming geometry stream, which has been described by the box SOP verb, right? So if I now, you know, change the distance parameter and I change the divide into individual elements, we now get a uh, modified version of the geometry that came into this, you know, SOP verb res representation. So how, were, how would you do this, uh, you know, in a SOP uh, verb, right? Or using SOP verbs. So to do that, the easiest way is not, you know, doing it in a Python state, uh, like we will be doing at some point, but to actually try and debug it in a Python SOP because the Python SOP, you know, executes geometry and also automatically, um, you know, shows you the result of that geometry in the viewport uh, using this, this geo here or the actual node geometry, right? So creating the actual SOP verb, uh, we sort of already saw it on the slides. Uh, we can just type, for example, box, and that's gonna be our, our uh, variable storing the SOP verb equals um, who dot SOP node type category. And then we say node verb, and then we can pass in the name of the SOP verb we want to grab. And in our case, you know, since we said box, we of course wanna create a box. So how do we, you know, get this box to be uh, executed essentially and be output somewhere? Well, we've now declared our SOP uh, verb or node verb to get it to actually be executed or applied to the incoming geometry. We need to say, uh, you know, our verb, which is box dot execute. Then what we do is we describe our, um, our output geometry, right? Where do we want to write this operation onto. So in this case, it's geometry. Then we have a list containing inputs and then we just close it. And when we do that, we can now see that we have um, our box ver uh, software being executed and the result of it is being put in the geometry. So if you wanted to, for example, um, describe what we have here with the box and the poly extrude, the very next thing we of course need to do is create another um, subverb, right? So let's just call it poly extrude equals, and then we're just going to copy this line to save some time to grab the internal name of poly extrude. We can see it's poly extrude colon colon 2.0. So let's do that too. Okay. And if we were to now, you know, apply our poly extrude to our uh, now box geometry, we would simply write poly extrude dot execute. What do we want to feed into uh, this node software, right? Or write onto the geometry. We're not gonna have an input. And then when we do that, we should now see that we have um, uh, a poly extrude, right? But it's gonna complain. It's gonna say requires one input, only zero connected. And this is what these two brackets describe, right? What are the inputs to this SOP verb. And as you can see in the network editor, that's visualized by this line here. We have the output geometry of this node feeding into the very first input of poly extrude. So in our case, what you know describes our um, incoming geometry? Well, that's this geo variable that we just wrote onto. So if we type geo in here, we can now see that it no longer throws an error. But we of course also don't see anything. And that is because the poly extrude has its default parameters. We didn't say what to do with it. 
So if you were to reset this one here to default, you would see that it also produces just the same box. So how do we set these parameters? Well, we would do it the exact same way that we could usually do it from Python. So we can say um, polyextrude, which is our subverb, set params. And then uh, in this case, you know, we could either individually set parameters or we could set all of them at once. And that's what we're gonna do now. We're just gonna use these curly brackets to create a dictionary describing all of the parameters that we want to set on the node. And so in our case, uh, let's just set the distance, right? So we can see the parameter, uh, internal name of the distance parameter is called dist. So we're gonna say uh, dist. And what do we want to set the parameter to? So let's say 0 0.1. And now when we um, execute this, you can already see that uh, it has applied this uh, parameter value to the subverb. So the other thing that we wanted to do is, of course, um, you know, change it to be individual elements. So what's this parameter called? It's called split type. Okay, so let's add a comma here and say split type. And uh, we're going to set it to a value of one, uh, which is going to keep it at the default, right? Connected components is a value of one. But in our case, we wanted individual elements, so we're going to use zero for our parameter. And now you can see that we do indeed have the same result that we have here in our um, node representation in our subverb. Of course, it looks a little bit different because that's um, the differences in uh, parameter values. But now, as you can see, you know they are uh, identical. Okay, so that is a simple example using a box and a polyextrude. I want to show uh, an example that is uh, a little bit more uh, sophisticated. So, for example, uh, you know having a box and a sphere dropping it in a boolean and just doing a union on them. So how are we going to do that? Well, uh, I'm just going to be copying this uh, node that we just created, right? The uh, the example with the uh, the polyp shoot and use that as a base because then we can just copy some code from there and uh, use that. Okay, so uh, let's take a look at what we need to do. We need to create a boolean uh, verb, we need to create a box verb and a sphere verb. And the difference with uh, this example, which is why I want to show it, is that previously our um, our box and our sphere and our uh, or sorry our box and our polyextrude only had one input right the polyextrude, but this one has two so it's a little bit different um, but also very similar. But I just wanted to show you an example with two inputs, because it's gonna just allow you to do nodes with as many inputs as you want. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna need to do is of course uh, create our box and our sphere. So what I'm going to be doing is just make some room here is instead of writing our box into the geo object, I'm going to be creating a separate geometry object for our box because that's going to allow us if we wanted to, um, to use the box geometry for other purposes. So I'm just going to say box geo equals who dot geometry like that. So we now have an empty geometry object called box geo that we're going to write into the box verb, right? So when I uh, comment out this code here, let's just do that real quick. We should now see that we have no more geometry. And that is because we've now written our box verb into the box geo geometry object instead of the geo object, as you can see, okay? So very important, keep an eye on that. Next up, we're gonna create our sphere. So once again, uh, let's create an empty sphere object, our geometry. We're gonna say sphere verb, we're gonna say sphere here, and of course we're gonna create the sphere verb, like that, and right into the sphere geo. So now we have two geometry objects. We have a box and a sphere. Let's just verify that our sphere works by just writing it into geo. And as you can see, uh, what we're getting by default is a primitive sphere. And Boolean doesn't quite like uh, primitive spheres here. So that's something we're going to need to change. And the way we're going to do that is, of course, changing parameters. So how do you do that? Well, just like before, we can say sphere dot set parms. And then our parentheses, our curly brackets, and make some room here. And then once again, we're going to construct a dictionary describing all of the parameters and their values we want to set. So let's take a look at our sphere and what we need to change. So the first thing we need to do is, of course, change the primitive type to be polygon mesh. And so this parameter is called type. So we're going to need to create a dictionary key called uh, type. 
and we're going to set it to, let's see, value number zero, one, two. Okay, so we're gonna say two here. And so now when we execute it, we can see that we get a, a polygon sphere instead of a um, primitive sphere. The other thing I noticed is that the sphere is quite big, so uh, it's gonna be bigger than uh, our box, so our union wouldn't just show a whole lot. So we're gonna just use the scale parameter to scale it down. So let's put our display flag back here, so add a comma, and then we're gonna say scale, and let's set a value of 0.6. Uh, so this looks about right. It's gonna stick out of the box a little bit. And then of course, we're gonna write it back into uh, sphere geo instead of geo. Okay, so this is an easy way to debug, uh, you know, some, some intermediate steps that you're, you're writing uh, by just writing into the actual geo object, uh, which is the geometry data that's coming in as input and passing through, uh, through the node. Okay. The next thing we're gonna to need to do, of course, is uh, create our Boolean verb. So we're gonna say Boolean equals, and once again, this is also a sub node type category uh, verb, and we're going to change it to Boolean colon colon 2.0. So let's do that. Boolean colon colon 2.0, okay. And now we're getting to the interesting bit. Uh, we're gonna be passing in not one input, but two inputs. So how do we do that? Well, first of all, we need to grab our Boolean verb and say execute. Where are we going to write it into? We're going to write it into the geometry stream because we want the output of this Python node to be uh, the result of our Boolean. Then we're going to create our square brackets and close it. So for the input, we can just look at what our uh, sub network looks like, right? We are passing in the, uh, the data stream from a box and we're passing in the data stream from the sphere. So would we be passing in the verbs themselves or would we be passing in the, uh, the geometry objects that we have been uh, creating? Well, since we want to be operating on the geometry, we of course need to pass in the geometry objects. So we're gonna do just that. We're gonna say box geo, and then we're also going to pass in the sphere geo, just like that, uh, by just pasting that in there. And then when we now let the node cook, we can indeed see that it has been writing um, the box geo and sphere geo run through our Boolean verb into our geo object, which is the output of this node. And the result is exactly as we expected. It is this node um, giving us a cool looking result. So since we already have uh, you know, our, uh, our poly extrude node here, why don't we try and enable that and see what happens just for fun. Uh, it might crash, it might not crash, but we'll see what happens. Uh, and there we go, all good. It did not crash, it just executed perfectly. Um, so as you can see, subverbs are a really powerful way of uh, programmatically uh, generating or modifying geometry without you know, constructing node networks um, using Python. Um, but the one thing to, of course, always keep in mind is that not every node uh, that exists in Houdini is available as a subverb. So use the knowledge that you've, you, you've learned on the slides uh, before this video to figure out how you can actually figure out which nodes are uh, available as verbs. And then there's one more thing that I wanted to show, which is gonna be useful later on in the course when we're gonna be creating uh, multiple uh, pieces of geometry, is how we could, for example, merge uh, a box and a sphere in the sense that a merge sop does it for you. So we're gonna get rid of all of this Boolean stuff here. And uh, we are going to change the position parameter of our sphere. So we're just gonna change the, uh, the center parm, which is called T, X, T, Y, and T, Z, as you can see. Uh, so we're just gonna change this to T, T. And what do we set it to? We set it to a who.vector3. And let's just give it a value of 2, 0, and 0, uh, giving us this. Okay. So how do we pull in the box geo and the sphere geos, which are separate objects, into the geo object? Well, the way we can do that is very simple. We can just say geo.merge, and then we can say box geo giving us our box. And then afterwards we can say uh, geo.merge sphere geo. 
giving us both our sphere and our box. So very simple, but uh, this is why in our previous example, I stored these two geometries into separate geometry objects. It also allows us to you know, reuse this geometry without having to construct a new one. Okay, that's it.